From the onset, the Nazi party were obsessed with the world of the occult. They scoured the globe in search of the weapons that would enable them to conquer the world and build their 1,000-year Reich. From the Holy Grail to the lance that pierced the side of Christ, from Tibet to the Antarctic, no region nor mythological device was ignored. They turned the planet inside out, looking for something ancient, something the Nazi elite called the most powerful weapon. A weapon that would instill such awe that it would cause the entire world to surrender overnight. And then, suddenly, during the Second World War, and perhaps even years before, the Nazis achieved a massive leap in technology, so great that many have questioned where this Nazi science originated. Nobody in the world had technology like Nazi Germany. In fact, no country was even near the technology of the Third Reich. From the first jet aircraft to advancements in innumerable facets of science and engineering, the Nazis had no equal. Thousands of scientists with bottomless budgets across the globe were working furiously day and night for years to create new war machines. And yet the Nazis had not only developed one device, they had developed dozens. They were also miles ahead in every area, including genetic manipulation, mass hypnosis, and unfathomable experiments into the very nature of time and space itself. Legends of the strange and powerful force known as Vril abounded, and soon there were reports of amazing flying machines that could outmaneuver and outgun anything in the world. Orbs of light that could cause a mechanical drive to malfunction, even fall out of the sky. Shortly thereafter, the Nazis unleashed the world's first unmanned rocket drones, which fell upon Great Britain in such force that it devastated a world power. During this period, hundreds of pilots across the world witnessed what is the most prolific series of UFO encounters ever recorded. Hitler knew well what was in store for the world, and that knowledge carried his unwavering conviction that the Nazis would achieve victory. promised his people a series of weapons so advanced, so powerful, that it would enable the Nazi prophecy of world domination to come true well into the next millennia. But war is never fair, and even for the greatest military forces, war has its uncertainties. Many say that the outcome of the Second World War would have been very different 
If only the Nazis had a few more months to assimilate their discoveries. When the war was finally over, the United States brought over more than 1,000 German scientists, technicians, and engineers under the highly classified Operation Paperclip. Among them was rocket scientist Werner von Braun, who, with other former Nazis, provided information and technological advancements that would propel the U.S. space program on a fast track to the moon. To develop experiments for manned space flight, which use the special capabilities of the trained astronaut as a sensor, manipulator, and evaluator. But where did the Nazis get this knowledge? Von Braun said more than once, we had help. This is the real forbidden history. This is the story of the Nazis and the aliens from outer space. For decades, there has been speculation that the Nazis had links to UFOs. The crash at Roswell in 1947 is believed by many to be post-war Nazi technology gone wrong. This may indeed be true. The question is, was this really Nazi technology or alien technology being back-engineered by the Nazis? The fact is that the Nazis did have aircraft that was far superior to anything known to man at that time. Indeed, at the beginning of the war, most aircraft were biplanes, and by the end, Germany were about to put into service their first manned jet plane. The modern conspiracy theories and speculations are not new. In fact, it all began immediately after the war. There are a few facts that actually add fuel to the fire and begin to make a strong case for something very strange indeed. In 1938, the Nazi Third Reich for some reason claimed a territory in the Antarctic known as New Swabia and sent a military expedition there. In fact, this was so suspicious that the U.S. military sent their own secret expedition there after the war, and the findings remain classified to this day. From 1933 onwards, the Nazis sent out missions across the world to find mythological and religious artifacts that held a strange force they called Brill. The 
The Nazis were at the forefront of jet propulsion technology and spent huge sums of money on it. This included the Horton's Flying Wing and several flying saucer-shaped ships. Throughout the war, there were sightings of UFOs. These came mainly in the guise of what we now call food fighters. Strange balls of light that flew around Allied aircraft. The Allies actually believed these to be enemy aircraft, specifically designed to harass them with advanced electromagnetic interference. Many Axis pilots were also buzzed and also believed them to be advanced aircraft. If they were German craft, then their existence would have been kept secret from servicemen in general. But there is another possibility, that they were in fact alien craft. The Foo Fighter was so common and such an irritant that top scientists were ordered to investigate. Allied intelligence believed them to be advanced German technology because some had actually damaged Allied craft. Strangely, following the war, reports of Foo Fighters did not end. From 1947, UFO sightings rocketed. High-velocity darting lights buzzing commercial and military craft and even spotted by eyewitnesses on the ground. The U.S. government set up Project Sign to investigate the growing problem. This was followed by the infamous Project Blue Book. Captain Ruppelt of Project Blue Book stated, When World War II ended, the Germans had several radical types of aircraft and guided missiles under development. The majority were in the most preliminary stages, but they were the only known craft that could even approach the performance of objects reported by UFO observers. The only known aircraft that could even approach the performance of such objects. This is a very interesting statement because it reveals several things. Captain Ruppelt would have known a great deal about U.S. military capability, and they had nothing like the Nazi technology. Second, the Foo Fighters and subsequent UFO sightings were far superior to Nazi technology, which was in the preliminary stages. One conclusion we could draw from this is simple. The sightings were of real UFOs, real alien craft, and the Germans had somehow got their hands on it and were fighting to retrofit the technology. They were still in the preliminary stages when the war came to an end. 
we can pinpoint a rough date for when the Germans acquired the technology from an Italian newspaper that reported types of flying discs were designed and studied in Germany and Italy as early as 1942. Some great power is launching discs to study them. There is no mention of who this great power might be, but many believe the meaning was extraterrestrial. To the Nazis, power came from the occult. The word simply means hidden, something we cannot see, a force. But one particular Nazi UFO actually played right into this idea. The Bell UFO. It had occult markings, giving it power. The fact is, the Nazis' whole symbolism and origin was in the occult. The swastika itself is an occult symbol and amazingly first originates in Sumeria as a sign of the great lights that came from the sky. These were the shining ones and watchers. A special race that taught mankind and then went back into the sky, following a breeding program with humans. In the Bible, these beings are known as angels, messengers of light. The swastika was not only a symbol of energy, of the vril, but also a symbol of the earliest alien visitors to planet Earth. The occult marked Bell UFO was a vertical takeoff craft that was developed further by the US after the war. Indeed, one actually crashed in 1965 in Pennsylvania. At that same moment, a German engineer called Rudolf Schreiber told a newspaper that he and his team had been designing flying saucers up to 1945 and that the designs had been stolen by the Czechs. Whatever the case, one thing is certain. German scientists were spirited away to the U.S. and dispersed among the various aeronautical companies and NASA. By 1953, the Avrocar, with a speed of 1,500 miles per hour, was announced a circular flying saucer based completely on Nazi technology. During the war, these technologies were over 30 years in advance of anything the rest of the world had, and even 30 years later, they were only in existence because of this massive leap in technology. The US never achieved this kind of success even then. Roy Fedden, the chief of the technical mission in Germany for the Ministry of Aircraft Production, stated in 1945, 
I have seen enough of their designs and production plans to realize that if the Germans had managed to prolong the war some months longer, we would have been confronted with a set of entirely new and deadly developments in air warfare. also said that there were several other projects the Germans had been working on. But to this day, those projects remain secret and unknown. So just where and how did the Nazis come across this advanced technology. In 1937, two years before the start of the Second World War and ten years before the infamous crash at Roswell, a UFO crashed in the German countryside. know of this crash from eyewitness accounts and many rumors. Why? Because both the Allies and later the USSR did everything they could to cover it up. When the reports of the crashed UFO reached the Nazi High Command, Hitler sent out his top scientists and the Luftwaffe to investigate. The craft was moved to a secret location, somewhere near the River Rhine, and other parts shipped close to the Austrian border. We do not know why parts were separated, unless there were actual beings inside. Quickly, Nazi teams of engineers were assembled to work on the salvage. Among them were the Horton brothers, to whom we shall soon return. Another engineer was Victor Schoberger, who would later supposedly invent a revolutionary imploder motor vortex which would become part of the Nazi Bell UFO. According to some, this Bell UFO created a rift between dimensions in space. The skillful engineers managed to retro-engineer various designs, but seemed to always come up against a problem. It has been suggested the main issue was the material. Mid-20th century metallurgy was not up to the same standards as the crash ship, and no matter how hard they tried, scientists could not replicate the materials. It may be that the metal itself had some form of anti-gravity element and stabilizer. Hitler stepped in and ordered his top scientists to get the technology working. Actual secret documents recovered by Allied military intelligence reveal that the Nazis were actually getting close. But test pilots were killed, 
and they simply couldn't get it right before the end of the war. The steel or aluminum was too heavy or too soft. The craft were unstable. Nothing matched the alien metal, which was light and strong. In 1944, they got very close with a new mixture of aluminum and magnesium. But it was too late, and most efforts went into the production of the unmanned V-2 Vengeance rocket. So, why did the craft crash over Germany? Was there already some form of contact? We have already hinted at the world of the occult within the Nazi dream. There are two main strands to this. The origin and mother of the Nazi party was a group known as the Thule Society. Members believed that there was an ancient race of semi-divine and perfect humans that had come from a place called Thule. A kind of Atlantis, it was a perfect utopia, a Germanic dream state, and home to almost alien-style beings. Many believe that these beings could still be contacted and even found, channeling thoughts to and from the superior race. Another society linked with the first was the Vril Society of Berlin. Vril is a kind of occult energy force, powerful and with the added bonus of allowing communication between dimensions. Together with the Thule and Nazi party, it is believed that they actually made contact with aliens or the ancestors and began developing flying sources and other technology. Some believe that following the war, these people retreated to a secret Nazi base in the Antarctic. Whatever the truth, there is often no smoke without fire. Something about these rumors came from somewhere. One of those places was the infamous Foo Fighter. The word is a coverall for UFO sightings during the war, and there were hundreds. In our modern times, we tend to believe UFO sightings are by cranks, and much of this has been brought about by the movies. The fact is, however, that UFO sightings have been happening for millennia, and there is plenty of historical evidence to prove this, from medieval paintings to books like the Bible. During the Second World War, there was nothing new, but there was a huge number of sightings because there was a lot more activity in the skies.
thousands and thousands of pilots were up in the sky every day, and they saw all manner of strange things. This was not localized, this was worldwide. It wasn't just coming from Germany, it was everywhere. In November 1944, an intelligence officer reported that two pilots had been chased by a glowing red ball that had maneuvered in such a way it could not have been anything they already knew about. A reporter was sent from the Associated Press and he arrived on base in France in December 1944, and the name Fu was fostered by him. Pilots described the objects as glowing and fiery, red, white, orange, and resembling Christmas tree lights. They were said to toy with aircraft, as if playing with them or testing their abilities. They never displayed hostile behavior. They behaved as if under intelligent control, flew in formation with the aircraft, could not be shot down, and vanished without trace. All of these reports were from pilots. These were not cranks. At first, the Allies believed them to be Axis weapons, but very quickly learned that the Axis, too, were reporting the strange phenomenon. Foo Fighters are quite possibly the biggest UFO event ever to hit our planet, and yet it is not, to this day, taken seriously. Nobody has figured out what they were. Nobody has come close. To this day, we still do not have craft that can maneuver in the way they did. In 1945, Time magazine finally ran this story, and yet scientists attempted to calm the story down, saying that many hundreds of pilots were suffering illusions caused by flak. This was quickly reduced to ashes when photographs emerged and the fact Foo Fighters were often seen when there was complete calm. Finally, a B-29 gunner managed to hit one of the UFOs. It broke up, fell to the ground where its intense heat set fire to the buildings. And yet, the balls of fire never fought back. No record of the debris remains. They were also seen by other people. In 1941, a Foo Fighter was seen in the Indian Ocean by members of a Polish merchant vessel. They reported it as a strange glowing green light, half the size of the moon. A British officer was alerted and he too saw the UFO. They watched it for over an hour.
The list of reports goes on and on, but one thing is constant. The witnesses are highly intelligent, combat-aware individuals who do not mistake St. Elmo's fire for intelligent, highly advanced aircraft. The Foo Fighter is very strong evidence for alien craft being amongst us. That, or for the past 70 years, somebody has been keeping the most amazing technology from not only the public, but the military of the world. If the craft were, as some have suggested, German technology, then, just like the flying saucers and the flying wing, we would now be aware of it. NASA itself would have developed the technology. Unless, of course, they really are alien craft. Another suggestion that pilots were having visions has already been destroyed by numerous photographs that have emerged. Cameras don't have visions. We mentioned earlier the crashed UFO in Germany and two very important brothers who were part of the investigation, the Horton brothers. The Horton brothers were German aircraft pilots and enthusiasts. They had no formal training. They weren't engineers. They were just enthusiastic. And yet, by 1940, they had supposedly designed some of the most advanced aircraft on the planet. They had surpassed the hundreds of engineers in the USA, Britain, and all other allied nations. How could it be that two amateur brothers could design such amazing technology as the flying wing? We do know that they were involved with secret flying clubs between the wars. They were experimenters and did manage to create a glider during their time in the Hitler Youth. This and other things brought them to the attention of the Nazis and soon they were Luftwaffe pilots. The official story is, is that they were also brought in as design consultants. The truth is, that they were brought in to help investigate and back-engineer the crashed UFO in 1937. It was this very year that they suddenly had a breakthrough and started using motorized planes. By 1942, they were already working on jets and the flying wing. In trials, their HO-229V2 reached over 500 miles per hour. The technology had taken massive leaps and was far outpacing anything the Allies had. New jet fighters, stealth technology with the use of a special carbon layer, hybrid turbo rocket fighters with speed surpassing Mach 1.4.
After the war, one brother moved to Argentina and the other remained in Germany. All their ideas had seemingly burned out. That, or they had gone to the limit of their UFO knowledge. So advanced were the machines the Hortons created that the U.S. Air Force's UFO Project Sign investigated the possibility that their designs had in fact been used by the USSR. But the brothers were not the only ones who had been investigating the crashed UFO. There were others, and the majority of them were spurted away after the war to both the USSR and the USA, under the highly secretive Project Paperclip. Top Nazi scientists were given new lives, names, and homes. One of them would rise to incredible fame with his work at NASA. His name was Werner von Braun. In 1945, the German rocket scientist Werner von Braun surrendered to Major Clay Shore of the U.S. Army. Clay was working as an agent for Project Paperclip, which was designed to secure advanced Nazi technology and personnel, and bring it back to the U.S. before the Soviets got hold of it. Werner von Braun and other top Nazi scientists working with NASA successfully launched the Apollo moon landing project. Without Nazi advanced technology, the moon landings would not have happened in 1969. So the USA got their technology from the Nazis. But where did the Nazis get it? The Nazis gave birth to a strange idea about a special and superior race, the Aryans. The ultimate German was thought to be descended from them. But what were the Aryans in the first place? The fact is, nobody really knows. They were thought to have come from the mind of the madman himself, Adolf Hitler. But the fact is, they are the mythological remains of much older ideas. These ideas are no different to the stories of angels, watchers, and shining ones of ancient times. It is the memory of the lights that came down from the sky and walked among man. The Nazi party went in search of them and used all their military, scientific and even occult knowledge to contact them. They actually claimed they had made contact with what they said were supermen. Hitler even claimed to have met one in person when part of the Thule Society. Hitler himself was never found after the war, and secret documents released recently indicate that the U.S. Secret Service had tracked him to South America, along with Eva Braun, his wife.
According to the Nazis, the Supermen lived beneath the Earth's surface to hide away from mankind. In ancient legend, these were the hybrid race spawned by aliens, or Shining Ones, who had descended to Earth. A battle had ensued, and the hybrids almost wiped out. Legends tell us that these people receded to caves and the inner world of the Earth's tunnels. They became myths as giants, trolls and more. The Nazis were to help them return and repurify the human race, which had become impure. There is nothing new in these tales. It is a story that has surfaced again and again throughout history, ever since the hybrids disappeared. And like those historical cases, it was said that contact by special occult means had been established. In the past, this was the shaman, druid, priest or witch. In the war, it was by the magic and science of the Thule, and later, the Nazi occult specialists. Hitler and the Nazis saw all of this as some form of morphed religious reality, that he was bringing perfection to the world for the ultimate goal of divine judgment. The army we have formed is growing from day to day. I nourish the proud hope that one day the hour will come when these rough companies will grow into battalions, the battalions to regiments, the regiments to divisions, that the old flags will wave again, and there will be a reconciliation at the last great divine judgment which we are prepared to face. Some claim that Hitler and other Nazis communicated with the ancient Nordic gods and to know their will. This communication allowed the Nazis to technically advance above all other nations, not by just a few years, but by decades. From radar and infrared technology to heavy water, and rocket engineering. To many around Hitler, he was a god on Earth. And that is why many more say that he did not die as the history books would have us believe. In 1952, Dwight D. Eisenhower said, we have been unable to unearth one bit of tangible evidence of Hitler's death. Many people believe that Hitler escaped from Berlin. President Truman asked Joseph Stalin in 1945 whether or not Hitler was dead. Stalin replied, no. Russian Marshal Gregory Zhukov, whose troops occupied Berlin, stated in 1945, we have found no corpse that could be Hitler's. At Nuremberg, one of the trial counsels stated, no one can say he is dead. Major General Floyd Parks stated that Marshal Zhukov believed Hitler might have escaped. 
Lieutenant General Bedell Smith, later director of the CIA, stated, no human being can say conclusively that Hitler is dead. Colonel W.J. Heimlich, former chief United States intelligence said, there was no evidence beyond that of hearsay to support the theory of Hitler's suicide. On the basis of present evidence, no insurance company in America would pay a claim on Adolf Hitler. So what happened? In 1943, a secret meeting occurred that actually planned for the end of the war and the creation of World War III. Many Nazis were sent underground. They changed identities and infiltrated various governments of the world. Germany would be built back up again and become a major power. It would take over businesses around the world and continue its work. Hitler would be spirited away to South America with Eva Braun. Amazingly, in 2014, new evidence came to light that Hitler had indeed done exactly that. Secret FBI and CIA files showed that the intelligence services had known all along. A silence over the whole thing still remains. At that secret meeting in 1943, it was decided to improve the defenses of a secret location known only to the top Nazis. The U-boat commander, Admiral Donetz, was given the task. He said, the German U-boat fleet is proud to have made an earthly paradise, an impregnable fortress for the Führer, somewhere in the world. No location was revealed, but most believe it to be somewhere in South America. In 1944, Admiral Donetz told a class of naval cadets in Kiel, the German Navy knows all hiding places for the Navy to take the Fuhrer to, should the need arise. There he can prepare his last measures in complete quiet. Whatever the case may be and whoever made it down to South America, we may never truly know. But we do know that hundreds if not thousands of Nazis did. And we do know that sightings of UFOs have been happening down there ever since, on huge scales. up the facts does reveal something was afoot. In 1938, Nazi Germany claimed the territory of New Swabia in Antarctica. They sent an expedition there, planned others, and we know that the U.S. secretly visited the location after the war. The Nazis claimed openly to be in touch with the Aryan masters and to be gods on Earth. They were supermen, dealing with the ancient gods that came from the sky. The Nazis were involved deeply with what we call the occult, and which in reality 
is possibly another form of communication. The Nazis were leaps and bounds ahead of every other nation on the globe with technology and engineering. All Allied members truly believed that the famous Foo Fighters were of Nazi origin. All the Secret Service documentation we have proves that fact, a fact never denied by the Nazis. These Foo Fighters not only maneuvered in extraordinary ways, they also had advanced electromagnetic disruption capabilities that only became available to the rest of the world decades later. The Nazis had flying saucers, and for the last 70 years, these have been the classical craft sightings all over the globe. In the 1930s, the Germans had 57 submarines. Within the space of four years during the war, they built over 1,000 technologically advanced and superior U-boats that outfought anything the rest of the world had. This massive Nazi U-boat fleet was not scuttled after the war. It was not handed over to the Allies. It simply disappeared, along with tons and tons of Nazi gold. That gold is estimated to be worth trillions of dollars and yet remains undiscovered. A secret deal of evidence points to the possibility that the Nazis continued their technological work not just with NASA, but also in the Antarctic. In fact, with every passing year, new sites are discovered in remote locations of secret Nazi testing grounds, sites that were never entered into the historical record. And there is a peculiar thing that occurred in 1956. The U.S. sent a task force in secret and undercover to New Swabia in the Antarctic. Their role is unknown. What we do know is that they returned damaged. Something happened while they were there and it has been kept secret ever since. Over 100 men simply disappeared and dozens more injured. A ship was lost and the commander was given a presidential order by Eisenhower to never speak of the horrifying events. What happened? We simply do not know. 
we do know that over 15 years before, nothing happened to the Nazis when they were there. Are they still there? Is this a UFO base that even the great US military dare not revisit? Did the Nazi expectations come true? They truly believed that they were in touch with the masters and that somewhere out there they would discover the answers to advanced technology and genetic science. All of this would give them dominance over the whole world. A political force that on one hand was logical to the point of being steel and yet also believing in a cult connection to aliens or superhumans. that they could fashion the genetics of the world and usher in a thousand-year Reich. The documents pertaining to the secret teams that spread out around the world in search of ancient artifacts and alien technology were destroyed. The evidence, however, when pieced together, proves that they found something that they had amazing knowledge, far in advance of the rest of mankind, while all the time building a massive economy, war machine, and turning around the fortunes of a broken nation. It is an amazing feat and one that earned Hitler the front cover of Time magazine. The big questions are these. What do the aliens get out of such contact? And is that contact still ongoing? And with whom? Mankind had been static for tens of thousands of years. A wooden stick may have developed into a sword, but it remained a sword for hundreds and hundreds of years. Then, suddenly, within the space of one generation, we are wearing supercomputers on our wrists and speaking to people face to face who are on the other side of the planet. The Second World War saw the rise in amazing engineering with rockets and nuclear energy, but it also saw the birth of computer technology, another area that the Nazis were superior in. Hundreds of reports from Allied pilots during the war report not just the amazing Foo Fighter technology, but other strange, bizarre flying machines. Most of these reports were taken very seriously and covered up. Flashing lights traveling at supersonic speeds, flying disks, orbs and other strange objects have never been explained. 
The UFO phenomena of the Second World War is a massive part of our history that has been played down, ignored, and hidden. Professional men and women around the world witness UFOs every single day. And yet today, people are ridiculed for seeing the same things. We still travel in cars, on trains and planes. But something out there is not. Something out there is traveling in much more advanced machines. And somebody behind the scenes of power knows who they are.